guys, Andy here. So I've been using the Wiley Fox Swift 2 for probably only actually three or four days. Um, I usually, well, I suppose when I do my reviews, I can use them anywhere from three or four days up to a week or more. Um, but I've got the Moto G5 waiting to be reviewed as well. And I felt that I had a pretty good feeling for the uh, for the Wiley Fox. So I thought I'd get on and give you uh, give you my opinion. Um, we'll start with the design of the device. I think it's uh, it's quite an interesting design, actually. So this one is the gold. It's also available. Well, the, the color range is midnight, uh, gold, as we see here, rose, and mint. Um, I think they all look quite interesting. Um, I think they look quite distinctive, um, quite different. You know, I like I like the kind of the white face and the gold back on this. I like the logo on the back there. It's generally it's a good looking phone, I believe. Um, there are different models. So this is the regular Swift 2. Um, I'll go through what the 2 Plus and the 2X um, bring to the table when we get to the specifications. Um, it feels a very solid device. It's, it feels very well made. It's obviously it's metallic. The back doesn't come off in any way. It is all one sort of, I wouldn't call it one block, but it's, uh, it's a solid device anyway. Uh, fingerprint sensor middle of the back, just underneath the camera lens there. Uh, I had to say it wasn't great. So when I was at the gym and I, I was getting a bit sweaty, quite often it wouldn't work as uh, as, as it's supposed to. Um, usually I could sort of just go again, or the old classic, when you don't quite get your finger on it right, then you move it to the right place too late, bring it off, bring it on again, and you're probably then gonna be okay. Um, so it wasn't, you know, it wasn't horrific, but it wasn't as good, I'm used to I guess the uh, the Pixel now, the Pixel XL, which has a fantastic fingerprint sensor. Um, it's not slow. It's not blazing quick, but it's not slow. Um, you know, generally, generally it's better to have than than to not have. I think these days, it's almost even on budget phones, it's becoming a bit of a sort of a a must have, really. Um, it's a little bit weird for me as well that the power button is below the volume. I don't think I've had that on a phone for quite a while. Definitely not recently. So I used to keep, I kept sort of reaching the top. But actually, when you get used to it, I think it's probably the better way around. Uh, more often than not, it's easier to use. If you've got to reach all the way up there, that just becomes a little bit unnatural. Although at times I'd have it like so, and actually the power button's right where you kind of would want it to be, I suppose. So yeah, same, same dot initially, but quite like the positioning there. It's 158 grams in total, and it feels good in the hand. It's not sort of thick and bulky. Um, it feels like quite a premium device, I'd even say. As far as the hardware, it's a five inch screen, 720p. Um, the chipset is the Snapdragon 430. I have to say, actually, as I'm going through these specifications, it was quite hard to find actual spec sheet. It's not on GSM Arena, which is where I normally go and the only place I could really see specs was on their own website, and even then they're, they're a little bit vague. Um, so that might be why I'm being a little bit vague now because actual information available isn't so great. And maybe you found it, if so, please post some information in the comments down below. I'm sure everyone would be very grateful. Where do I get to? So Octa-Core 1.4 GHz CPU, again, doesn't actually specify which the CPU is, just that it's 1.4 Octa-Core. Uh, the Adreno 505 GPU, two gig of RAM, and I did read somewhere it's DDR3, not DDR4, so that's a little bit old. There's a micro SIM in the main slot. There's a second SIM slot um, that's the nano SIM, it's fine. I actually only got it working in the second SIM slot. I put it in the first SIM slot and it didn't recognize for some reason. I'm not sure why, but it seemed to go fine in the second one. Although I did have to, <laughs> had a few issues, like data wasn't turned on automatically. I was like, why isn't it, what's going on? The SIM's in, it seems to register, the API settings are all, well, actually they weren't corrected actually, but I corrected them. And then I realized that the data was turned off. Fair enough, easy enough fix in the end. Uh, this is 16 gig version. And on Geekbench 3, scores around 3000. Um, Underneath there, you'll see the USB Type-C, which I'm very pleased to see. We'll talk about kind of battery charging shortly. And it's also got the speaker grills. It's got a f uh, downward firing uh, mono speaker, which I thought was quite weak, quite tinny. I do like my speakers, but this one was not a good one. I mean, it was okay, it was sufficient. I can make phone calls and have it on speaker and the per you know, I can hear the other person and all that. Um, but it was it was a bit of a weak point. So I mentioned the 
other version. So I've been through the two. The two plus, basically you get an upgrade on the camera. Oh, I didn't get to the camera. <laughs> so this is a 13 megapixel. Um, and I think the front facing was five megapixel. But on the plus it's 16 and eight megapixel. So you get an upgrade there. And in the plus you get 32 gig of storage and three gig of RAM. Um, so the plus possibly an option for you if you if you're not happy with two gig these days I know a lot of people aren't I think the plus was 30 pounds more so it's, you're not paying a lot more but when you're at budget prices this is 150 on the website uh, or sorry 159 um, so when you're at that kind of a low price it is quite a big proportion it's 20% more to go up to the to the plus then we have the X uh, which is up over 200 pounds but you get a 5.2 full HD display on the Swift 2X. You get quick charge, you get a slightly bigger battery at 3,010 milliamp hours, whereas this one, and I assume the Plus, only has a 2,700 milliamp hour. But then on the X, I guess you would want more battery for the bigger display. Uh, much of the rest of it all is, is the same on the other devices. So as I said, this is just the regular Swift 2. Um, Let's talk briefly about the camera. So I think it's got dual flash. Again, I'm have to be quite vague with, I mean, it certainly looks like it's dual flash. Uh, I found that the lens kind of, it seemed to struggle with bright colors. It seemed to overexpose or oversaturate perhaps might be a better a better word on some of the, like, I know you, I've got photos where I'm riding my bike, I've got an orange top on, it seems to struggle with that bright orange. Um, it also seemed to overexpose quite easily when I was taking pictures in bright light. Um, so yeah, not not great. And again, when you're at a budget end of things, the camera is often one thing that they seem to they cut costs on. I guess I guess the decent cameras are quite expensive to get off people like Sony. Um, the video seemed rather shaky, although generally, again, maybe the colours were a little bit odd. Um, but all in all, it wasn't too bad. It seemed to do reasonably well in the dark. I do like that it's got. Let's see if it works. There we go. Oh, here we go. So double press of the power button opens up the camera. I like sort of, I like some way to quick launch your camera. So yeah, camera, I would say generally a bit of a weak point. The front facing, I'll show you some uh, some samples as well as I talk about them. Eh, yeah, just, just not a strength of it, definitely. And I guess you'd have to go down as a bit of a weakness. The software is an interesting point. So it's running, let's just go down to about phone. Um, CyanogenOS OS version, CyanogenMod Mod API level, Alibri 5. So it's based on 6.0.1, but it's it's a Cyanogen mod, basically. Um, and they kind of gave up some time ago now. So, well, as you can see, my where is it? My security patch was December was the last one. And to be honest, I hadn't really thought about that until after I'd bought this device. And I thought, oh, yeah. What, what are they going to do? Because we're not going to get updates from Cyanogen Mod anymore. And apparently Swift, uh, sorry, uh, Wiley Fox will be patching them with basically stock Android, which I think is pretty great. Um, the In fact, I've started reading that some people are receiving, it was it was due last month, it got delayed. I'm reading that some people are, are receiving their their updates over the air. Now, it's 22 minutes ago, I keep checking, oh, where's mine? And it will go up to Nougat. And that, yes, Americans, that is how you say it, Nougat. Um, so that, I don't know, again, I actually get a little bit sort of torn on the OS. So for me, that's quite a big deal. It's going to go to stock Android for a lot of sort of nerds and geeks. And, you know, and I include myself in that title. Um, that's, that's a great thing. Joe Public on the street, probably not that bothered. They're probably not even that sure what Android is, um, with all due respects. They just want a phone that works. So I don't know. I don't know if that's a big issue or not. But for you watching this video, you might be a bit more sort of up with the tech. And you might be able to appreciate why stock Android actually is a really good idea. Um, there's a few different interesting. I'm not going to go through all the different bits of the settings. But there are some interesting bits that I assume probably are related to Cyanogen Mod and will go. Um, but things like you get some options for display density. Although it did warn me if I change that, some apps might stop working. I mean, I don't think they would. I think it would be fine. It, the whole point of Android is that it works on all these different sort of uh, display densities. Uh, there we go. Oh, and as you can see, there's an LCD, so I'm guessing it's an LCD panel. It's not AMOLED. Um, there's also an option for live display, which basically will change 
the screen based on the time of day so I guess it goes a bit red in the evening and it's, I don't really use it blue in the morning that kind of thing it's supposed to be good for you and good for your eyes blah, blah, blah. Customer, custom notification light sequences so it does have a notification light somewhere up here I forget now where now it's quite bright actually it flashes bright green um, you can change that a bit so it flashes at a different rate for different things and um, there's a battery modes let's go and have a quick look at that though so I've left it unbalanced almost all the time I put it to performance mode and ran um, Geekbench it made about 60 difference and out of 3000 that's not a huge thing but it's I guess it's good to have different options if you know you're gonna be out for a long day or a long couple of days you can go to battery save um, I did quite like that when so when you get the keyboard you get arrows there for the cursor so you start right things above you can move the cursor back I really like that that's that should be taken by stock Android I mean I know with stock Android you get the whole use the space bar but likes happen there so quite often it just doesn't work for me um, so yeah that's that's pretty cool so there are lots of little sort of extras in there in the in Cyanogen Mods so maybe by the time you're watching this video Cyanogen Mods out the window and it's got stock Android and so in some ways there's not that much point in me talking too much about it what I will perhaps do is do another quick video when it finally does get stock Android just so I can show you how that is but generally I felt it was nice and smooth um, I don't think there was one time it, it just froze up properly froze up um, I can't remember if I had to reboot it in the end but happened just the once it doesn't annoy me it seems to every time it drops the whole way down it's quite annoying then quite often you have to go back up to get your actual notifications I'm not sure why it does that uh, yeah but generally very smooth really quite impressive for being such a budget device um, no issues I, I'm not a game player so I can't really comment too much on how games are on it I mean I played a little bit of Angry Birds and it seemed fine so power wise I think there's enough there for your average kind of user if we move on to the battery I mentioned it was 2700 milliamp hours um, which isn't big by today's standards but then it's only powering a small screen at 5 inches and 720p so I guess it doesn't need that much on the test that I do an hour long test it finished on 92% which is actually like this tied second best score there is so you know don't, there's not any concerns there it also um, charges very quick so in 30 minutes it went up 57% and in an hour it went up 72% so I charged from 22% to full in an hour and 23 minutes that's pretty good again it's helped by being a smaller battery so a percentage is a smaller amount of milliamp hours I mean it's cramming them in pretty quick it charges up pretty quick and for me I found it plenty enough to get through a day you could probably get through two without without too much trouble and you've got those other power modes maybe you can even get to three I don't know I didn't try pushing it that far um, and if you're a big user of your phone things will be different I'm not actually that big a user I do most of my gaming on my computer I do well I do most of it on my computer really I, my phone isn't is only for sort of messaging and, and calls and stuff like that um, hackability you're really quite limited there it's basically non-existent I went over to XJ developers to see all right what what are my options oh they're none okay um, maybe that changes when stock Android comes but at the same time that would indicate to me that actually the development community they're not really or developer community aren't really behind the Swift 2 so don't get it for that so my conclusion is it a great phone no I don't think I'll go that far is it good value yeah I think so so I actually paid 120 it was on sale on Amazon maybe they'll do it again in the future um, I mean that's what 25% like off but even at 150, 159 it's still not you know it's not expensive and actually as I say it's nice and smooth the, my big concern for anyone is the camera so it, I guess it depends how important that is to you um, I'm still not convinced that a 720p screen at 5 inches is a problem so I don't see that as an issue a lot of people kind of they do I'm not really sure why I, th I think the screen I think the screen generally looks looks very good I, you know I just don't see that that's a problem um, the build quality is great it feels a very solid device I think someone that didn't know about it you could probably talk them into it as a 350 pound phone without too much trouble um, it really does feel very solid and very uh, very well made um, I think the design is quite unique as well so you could probably put that down as a plus um, but 
for me, possibly the camera is the deal breaker. So depends how important that is to you, I suppose. There we go. Uh, those are my thoughts. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments and down below. Please let me know. Um, also, I'll just point out I'm now on Patreon. I figured, why not? I'd love to. I quite often, so when I've done put videos up of the Swift 2, people have said, oh, can you test the 2X? Can you test the 2 Plus? I'm sorry, I haven't got them. You know, I've, I've bought this myself. You know, It's not that I'm short of money, but I just can't afford to go buying 10 phones each month to review. Um, so if you want to help out, if I've helped you out before, maybe you can send me a couple of dollars a month and maybe I can buy a 2X or a 2 Plus and I can do a video on it. Maybe. Anyway, the option's there. So that's all for now. My name's Andy. I'll catch you all again soon.